Welcome, folks. This is Everyday Math 11.7. It is the last unit or the last lesson of Unit 11, and then we're going to get into Unit 12. Unit 13, we're going to go back and hit Unit 6. But I'm going to start with Unit 11 here, and we're solving for area, surface area, and we're solving for volume. And what we really want to do is just apply the things we've already learned. So we're not starting anything new. We don't have new formulas to learn. We don't have anything really difficult to weed through. So let's start with an idea of a box, right? So I have a box, and that's a rectangular prism. And let's say my box here would be 3 times 2 times 4. And I don't know what the unit is, so we're just going to call it units, right? But inside that box, I run into a little bit of an issue. I've packed something inside that box. And I need to know the volume of the object that I've packed inside, right? Maybe this is a fish tank, and I realize in my fish tank that I'm using glass that is two inches thick. Well, that wouldn't work because I have two. So let's say, uh, let's make this four, and let's make this five, right? And my glass is going to be one inch thick by one inch thick by one inch thick by one inch thick. So if I have five inches, four inches, and four inches, the easiest way to solve this, because I want to know the, the volume of the inside. Certainly, I could f find uh, the larger volume, and I could find the smaller volume, and then I could subtract them. But I'm still, that's going to give me the volume of the space in between those two objects. So I want to know the volume of the smaller object. I have to use the big objects as a reference. So I always recommend drawing yourself two shapes, five, four, and four. So there's my original, right? Five, four, and four. Let's look at our new one. This is the inside. So if the width is five, but I took an inch off the right and an inch off the left, my width now is three. If my depth is four, but I took an inch off the front and an inch off the back, four minus two is two. Now, I didn't take any off the top and I didn't take any off the bottom. So that's still going to be 4. So now I have the new dimensions of my rectangular prism and the volume. So volume equals length times width times height. I have my frame of reference right here. 3 times 2 times 4. 3 times 2 is 6. 6 times 4 is 24 inches cubed. All right, so it's not anything more difficult than what we've already done. We're just using what we already know to apply it in this scenario. So you really have to read carefully and make sure that you understand what it's asking you to do. Case in point, let's look at the first one in your book here. If I had an aquarium, this is another aquarium. That seems to be very popular in this particular type of problem. So I have an aquarium, and the aquarium is 60 by 75 by 36. So I make myself a new rectangular prism that is 60 by 75 by 36. There's the outside. And then, I want to solve for the inside. And they want to know, OK, the glass is 2 centimeters thick. So what would be the volume of water inside? OK, so if it's 2 centimeters off the right and 2 centimeters off the left, 60 minus 2 on the right is 58, minus 2 on the left is 56. It's 75 deep, but we're missing 2 off the front and two off the back. 75 minus two off the front is 73, minus two off the back is 71. And I did not change the top or the bottom, okay? There's nothing that says my glass down here is two inches thick on the bottom. Nothing that says I have uh, any more space on top, so let's see what we have. 56 by 71, so 36 stays the same. Volume equals length times width times height, or base times width times height, 56 times 71 times 36. I don't know what that is, so I have to come over here and solve it. 71 times 56. 6 times 1 is 6. 6 times 7 is 42. Add a 0 for a placeholder. 5 times 1 is 5. 5 times 7 is 30. 5, 6, 7, 9, 3. I get 3,976 times 36. Now, if you had a calculator and you were checking this, this would be the bare minimum of what I'm looking for so that you know what 56 times 71 is. You made a mistake in your calculator, 
you can see it. You can check it, okay? You don't want to just jump through and say, put all these numbers together. 3,976 times 36. And, of course, I'm doing this longhand. It's not going to hurt anything. It's just going to take me an extra couple seconds here. 6 times 6 is 36. 6 times 7 is 42 plus 3 is 45. 6 times 9 is uh, 54 plus 4 is 58. And 6 times 3 is 18 plus 3 is 20. Or plus 5 is 23. Add my 0. 3 times 6 is 18. 3 times 7 is 21 plus 1 is 22. 3 times 9 is 27 plus 2 is 29. 3 times 3 is 9 plus 2 is 11. And let's add them all together and I get 6. 13, 11, 13, 4, 1. 100, come on, pen. 143,136 centimeters cubed is the volume of my inside of my aquarium. I didn't solve anything new. I didn't use any new formulas. I didn't do anything more difficult. Yes, these numbers are kind of difficult to work in the long run, but check them with a calculator. I don't happen to have one that I'm holding, or I would do the same thing. I took the outside, my original rectangular prism, as a reference, and then I used it to subtract the width of the glass. I found new dimensions for a rectangular prism, and then I solved that. Now, this really is the bare minimum of work that I need to see on your board, okay? So, bare minimum of work. So I can follow along what you did, you can follow along with yourself. Let's take another look at decoding the problem. Now, a lot of people make mistakes in this one because they don't realize whether we're doing surface area or volume. It doesn't really matter what we're solving for. This, these are the word problems. These are the difficult, long problems based on what we already know how to solve. But we already know how to solve it. So you're just taking your time and working through it. Alexander Graham Bell, inventor of the telephone, also invented a kite made out of cells of a triangular prism or a triangular pyramid, excuse me. So my triangular pyramid looks something like this. Now, the question that I had, kite made out of triangular pyramid-shaped cells with fabric covering one face and the base of the pyramid. The face and base both have heights of 17.3 centimeters, side length of 20 centimeters. How much fabric is needed to make one pyramid cell? So I have three pyramids here, one, two, three but I only have fabric on two of them. So they happen to be the same size. So I stop and I ask myself, okay, well, what shape am I dealing with? That should be the first question you ask every time. And the shape I'm dealing with, good old fashioned triangle. The base of that triangle is 20 centimeters and the height is 17.3 centimeters. Okay, Mr. W, what if they're different shapes? Then draw two triangles. Put in the numbers for two triangles and solve it. It doesn't really matter. But I do know the area of a triangle. Area equals one half base times height. One half times 20 times 17.3. Half of 20 is 10 times 17.3, which means one triangle, area of a triangle, is 173 centimeters squared. But I don't have one triangle, I have two. So I multiply that by two. Two times three is six, two times seven is 14, two times one is two, plus one is three. So my answer is 346 centimeters squared. 346 centimeters squared. This plus this, not this one, because I only have a base and one face, okay? So the, the key to all of this is to really take your time, break the problem down, ask yourself, what does it solve? Start with drawing a basic shape, make the problem explainable to yourself, then use the formula, input the numbers, and check your work.